Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this early uh, morning session. Uh, so my name is Meng Xinye, and I'm from the University of Utah. And uh, I also put KITP on the first slide because I was a postdoc uh, at KITP, and I just moved to Utah uh, this summer. So first, uh, let me thank my collaborators. Um, so the theoretical part of the work is done in collaboration with Urban Seifert and uh, Leon Balance at KITP. Uh, and uh, so uh, the first portion of this talk uh, was covered in the paper that we published in uh, 2022. And uh, at that moment, we thought they have understood everything until uh, Professor Nagati's group from KITP, uh, from MIT came to us and uh, show uh, us some of their data that uh, we realize that it's important for our, us to extend our theory. So that, that part is uh, you know, the ongoing work with uh, Urban Leon and the uh, uh, Gaddix group. So to begin this, uh, let me give you an introduction of the ultra-fast pump probe protocol. Um, so uh, uh, it consists of two parts. First is the pumping, and the second is the probing part. So in the pumping part, uh, we shy a strong ultra-fast laser that uh, is about 100 of second, uh, photoseconds duration to the system. And uh, we are interested in this uh, strong ultra-fast light-matter interaction and the non-equilibrium non-equilibrium states created uh, by the light matter interaction. And in particular, uh, we want to study the non-thermal process transition, uh, namely the effective temperature framework uh, breaks down. And instead, we need to develop away from equilibrium quantum theory to understand it. And, uh, uh, and because of this non-thermal transition, it turns out um, one can realize control of the materials by uh, changing the pump beam's frequency, polarization, strength, etc. And uh, um, we were interested in uh, to study how the system relaxes to equilibrium, and to do that, uh, one uh, apply a probing field with a picosecond time delay, and uh, uh, so we uh, and that will tell us the. Uh, equilibrium, equilibrium process. And uh, uh, depending on the time scale of the relaxation, we can distinguish two processes. One is a slow dynamics and another is a faster dynamics. And let me uh, explain to you what I mean by slow and faster dynamics. Uh, so for the slow dynamics, we are interested in uh, collective excitations, metastable states, and uh, also dynamical criticality, et cetera. And we can picture that through this simple effect, uh, through this effective action uh, uh, framework. So in this, uh, in the plot, I show the uh, potential uh, manifold as a function of the coordinate. And uh, to study the collective excitation, what mean, we mean is that we start, we excite the ground state of, uh, away, uh, uh, slightly away from the ground state a position and the study is the oscillation, and that is a collective uh, excitation. And we can also realize the matter stable state by excite the system to a matter, uh, to, a, uh, to, a, uh, uh, to a local minimum uh, in the ground state, uh, in the potential manifold, and also realize uh, criticality. So this, uh, and in the fast uh, dynamics, uh, what we mean is that if the pump is too short, that uh, we, it cannot uh, like affect the system using this uh, effective potential uh, picture, um, one can, uh, there is still strong effect due to the light matter interaction, but that dynamics is very fast, and it is due to the dynamics of the faster electrons. So we would expect to see this response only during the pump duration, uh, and uh, one nice example of it is the observation of the uh, flow quiet block states uh, on the surface of a topological insulator. So here you can see uh, what is seen from the probe, which is a time-resolved RPS uh, at a different uh, uh, time delay. And you can see that at the maximum of uh, the peak of the pump laser, we see a replicas uh, of, of um, block bands, and these are the flow quiet bands. So this is um, 
the realization of the flow quiet states uh, in uh, the TI. And this similar idea of faster dynamics of electrons can also be applied to understand uh, giant modulation of nonlinear optics uh, in antiferromagnets, where in equilibrium, the nonlinear optical signal uh, such as the second harmonic generation was believed to be sensitive to the antiferromagnetic order uh, that breaks inversion symmetry. However, this picture uh, breaks down uh, when, when, when there is a strong pump uh, modulation to the system and quest that questions our understanding of the nonlinear optics uh, when it is out of equilibrium. So this is a very broad uh, review of what uh, we have seen uh, and uh, uh, the general picture of the uh, ultra-fast pump probe dynamics. And in this talk, uh, I will be, uh, I will focus on something very simple, uh, namely to study the slow dynamics of collective excitations. So let me uh, repeat uh, this uh, like effective potential picture uh, and be more concrete here. So what we do is during the pump uh, time, uh, we create the ground state out of the uh, uh, ground state minimum and say it is uh, slightly away from this uh, parabolic band. And uh, uh, experimentally, uh, one can measure this uh, coordinate and depending on what coordinate we are talking about, we can apply different probing techniques. Um, and uh, uh, so, and that creates a uh, initial uh, condition during, uh, for the pump uh, period. And in this pump period, it starts to oscillate, and experimentally, we will see these uh, oscillations. And that tells us uh, the periods and also the relaxation of the collective uh, modes. And this has been seen in various systems, uh, charge, such as the amplitude mode of the charge density wave, the magnon oscillation in antiferromagnets, and also the Higgs mode in superconductivity, etc. So this is uh, very cool. And uh, here I'm going to focus on one, one example, uh, which is the ultra-fast magnetic excitation in Van der Waals magnets. So now let me explain why uh, we are interested in Van der Waals magnets and also uh, what, what, uh, we, uh, what is the questions to study, uh, what is the main theoretical challenges to study the ultra-fast magnetic excitations. So the Van der Waals magnets, uh, I don't need to mention too much, uh, it is a quasi 2D uh, atomic crystals uh, that exhibit intrinsic uh, magnetic properties and it has been studied a lot recently. And the reason it has a lot of advantages to study ultra-fast pump probe uh, are the following. Uh, first, uh, for this, uh, like, uh, thin film, uh, systems, uh, they have, there are a lot of limitations to, uh, use other conventional probes to study magnetic dynamics such as neutral <coughs> scattering, uh, but the ultra-fast uh, pump probe is a good platform, uh, to, uh, in these systems. And also, these systems generally have a strong spin orbit coupling, and uh, uh, practically that means it will allow a rich light matter couplings by symmetry for us to play with, uh, for example, by tuning the, by changing the polarization of the field, by changing the fluence of the field, etc. And also, uh, because of the spin orbit coupling, uh, we can study the effective coupling between the electric field and the uh, spin rather than the magnetic field, uh, which uh, like enhances the coupling significantly. And also, uh, there have been uh, many interesting uh, new bases uh, realized in these systems uh, or exotic physics realized in, in the system. So the uh, engineering, such as exfoliation, uh, one can realize quasi-2D magnets that can potentially realize the uh, pure two-dimensional XY model to study the BKT transition. And also, so the heterostruction, there have been nice works uh, on uh, skirmion crystals and the uh, uh, realization of triangular lattice Hubbard model. Um, so this, uh, with these motivations, uh, let's, uh, uh, we will focus on this uh, one particular kind of Van der Waals magnets. And uh, uh, so the in, uh, 
on the ultra fast uh, um, side, uh, one important question um, is to avoid heating, and this can be uh, realized if we uh, can pump the uh, magnetic excitations through the non thermal transitions. However, this non thermal transition means that we need to develop a five, far from equilibrium quantum theory uh, for the light matter interaction in the pump period. And that requires two things. First, we want to have a, a more complete uh, theoretical framework to study the uh, different energy skills, such as uh, uh, driving energy skills, the laser frequency, and the, um, the dissipation energy skill, as well as the pump time skill. And I will make it clear that why it matters uh, here using a very simple uh, example. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, so we want to have a micro understand the microscopic details uh, of the intrinsic degrees of freedom at multiple energy scales. Uh, so the reason we want to uh, understand the microscopic uh, details at multiple energy scales uh, is because uh, this light will strongly couple to uh, different types of excitations depending on the pump laser energy. So here I draw that the pump laser can range from terahertz to uh, vis visible light. And depending on the energy of the light, it will predominantly couple to different degrees of freedom. For example, in the, for the terahertz light, it strongly couples to magnetic excitations and phonons, uh, which are in this energy range. And for the visible light regime, it predominantly coupled to some optical transitions. And uh, for this low energy regime, there have been a nice work by Urban and Leon uh, a few years ago. And uh, uh, here we explored uh, this uh, higher energy um, um, ultra fast excitations. And uh, particularly for this talk, I will focus on uh, this um, optical transitions. And I will try to convince you that uh, it is a very simple, uh, interesting playground to study ultra-fast dynamics. Um, okay, so now let me get to the details. So I want to study uh, a particular Van der Waals magnet uh, called Nickel PS3, and it belongs to uh, one of the family of the uh, transition uh, metal uh, phosphorus uh, trichocodonite, and this M, uh, so this is, you might have seen this uh, many times, this M uh, denotes the magnetic ion, which are the uh, late 3D transition metal elements, uh, such as uh, magnesium uh, ion and nickel, and this X is uh, in the uh, oxide family. Uh, and uh, depending on the number of uh, 3D shell electrons uh, in this uh, magnetic ion and the spin orbit coupling, uh, this uh, system can realize different type of magnetic interactions from icing uh, XY to Heisenberg. And uh, uh, in particular for this nickel compound, uh, it is uh, simpler because it only have two holes in the uh, 3D uh, shells, uh, but it's uh, uh, still uh, very interesting, and uh, we can and it realizes uh, S1 uh, S equals to one Heisenberg model with weak anisotropies. And here I show the crystal structures, and uh, these magnetic ions are sitting on the honeycomb lattice, and the uh, Due to the interplay between the uh, exchange couplings, uh, the ground state realizes this zigzag order, and uh, you can see the zigzag chain here. And uh, uh, so we, we want to study the low energy dynamics of magnetic excitations, and uh, these are the pseudo ghost modes, and you can understand everything uh, just from the uh, like Goldstone theorem, uh, and uh, so when uh, let's uh, because uh, uh, let's uh, set the axis such that the zigzag order uh, is along the x-axis, then we can have two low energy magnetic excitations. So the first one um, denotes the staggered fluctuation uh, in the plane, uh, which uh, is along the y-axis here and its conjugate variable are ferromagnetic fluctuation uh, along the z-axis. 
And uh, this, because of the weak implant anisotropy, this mode has a lower energy, about uh, one milli electron volts. And the second low energy mode uh, is uh, the staggered excitation along the y-axis and uh, its conjugate <coughs> variable is ferromagnetic along the, uh, the, the second is uh, staggered along z-axis and its conjugate variable is ferromagnetic along the y-axis. And because of the large uh, out of plane anisotropy, it has a bit uh, stronger, uh, larger energy, which is about five milli electron volts. But uh, its oscillation can still be probed in the uh, ultra fast uh, setup. So, and uh, when one can one can start, uh, one can uh, understand uh, what is the dynamics of these uh, low energy modes uh, very in a very simple form. And uh, so this is an uh, effective Lagrangian. And uh, it, uh, the first term I show here uh, basically shows that they are conjugate, they have two sets of conjugate variables. And uh, the second part uh, denotes uh, anisotropy, uh, which gives a uh, pseudo Goldstone modes a uh, mass. And the uh, last part uh, is present only in the ultra fast regime, and they are induced uh, by the pump field. And this uh, like a uh, field H are what we want to understand microscopically. And given you have this effective action, you can write down the equation of motion, uh, which is essentially a damped harmonic, harmonic oscillator with some driven term during the pump period. And because of the uh, driven term H, it will set the initial condition uh, in the probe period. And uh, during the probe period, we will see the uh, damped harmonic oscillator uh, as shown in the green curve. And this uh, is a very simple picture to understand what we have seen uh, in the pictures uh, uh, that are taken experimentally. So uh, for this nickel compound, uh, this is indeed uh, what have been claimed to observe. Uh, they have seen two oscillations at different uh, pump field energy. So this 1 eV and the 0.8 eV denote the pump uh, field energy. And uh, you can see uh, two periods of oscillations. And here I'm going to focus one, one of them, uh, which is uh, the, called F1 mode, uh, which denotes the staggered uh, mag, uh, fluctuation along the y-axis. And if you look at how the amplitude of this pumped uh, oscillation depend on the photon and pump photon energy, you see that it is peaked around the one electron volts. And this tells you that there should be some resonant mechanism at play to excite this mode. And then you can uh, look at some uh, references and ask what are the uh, uh, excitations uh, of the system uh, at around one electron volts. And it turns out uh, to be the uh, orbital excitations of a single nickel ion. So well, what one can, uh, the picture is like follows. So we can consider an isolated nickel ion uh, in the crystal field environment uh, with the uh, two uh, D hole configurations. And that from the uh, effect, from the effects of the uh, crystal field splitting and the spin orbit coupling, we can work out the uh, irreducible representations of this uh, two D, uh, D uh, a whole uh, configure uh, like uh, multiplets. And uh, so, if we only include the spin orbit coupling, we find that the ground state is a, a orbital singlet denoted by A2 here, and it's a spin triplet. And the first excited state, which is about one electron volts, uh, is effectively a, a angular momentum one and a spin one multiplace. So that means there are uh, nine states here. And we, if you include the spin orbit coupling, uh, these nine states will split into a set of uh, um, into uh, one doublet, which is denoted by E and uh, two triplets denoted by T1 and T3, and a singlet A, A2. And uh, so uh, the ultra-fast laser uh, excite, uh, create excitations 
uh, from the ground state manifold uh, to the excited manifold. And uh, using this picture, the first thought we have is to derive an effective Hamiltonian, so a second order uh, process. And uh, the, um, so let, let me uh, describe to you why the second order process can give us uh, the anisotropies uh, we expected to excite the uh, magnons. So, so, uh, so first we note that this light uh, only couples directly with the orbital degrees of freedom, not the spin degrees of freedom. So to transfer to some effective spin interaction through the metalletter coupling, we need to include the spin orbit couplings. But in the ground state manifold, there is no way to, uh, uh, because this is an orbital singlet, there is no way to play with the spin orbit coupling. It turns out that if we look at the spin effects of spin orbit coupling in the excited manifold, say this E doublet, so and, uh, with the electric field, it will change the orbital uh, angular momentum by one. And due to the spin orbit coupling, we can work at uh, this, uh, and uh, uh, we can work at another state in this doublet uh, in this doublet in the same uh, uh, like doublet state uh, that will change the angular moment uh, that uh, ha has changed the spin as z, which is denoted by the second label uh, by one, and. Uh, then in the second order process, uh, this, uh, it, it allows uh, to change the orbital angular momentum back to the ground state manifold. And however, so this, uh, like, uh, this two step transitions, you realize that the effective uh, spin angular momentum in the ground state manifold is changed by minus one, and uh, that will create the spin interactions. And using this idea, we can derive the effective single ion anisotropy uh, of the spin Hamiltonian, and this is a general form uh, we obtained. And for example, uh, this uh, second term uh, denotes uh, effective Zeeman coupling due to the circularly polarized light. And uh, this, third, uh, this uh, term on the, in the third line show that uh, uh, this anisotropy, uh, this anisotropy, single ion anisotropy, uh, this anisotropy term, and if you set the magnetization along the x-axis, you will find that it can excite the staggered fluctuations. <coughs> and uh, for this uh, last term I show here, uh, following the same idea, you can show that it excites the staggered fluctuation along the z-axis. So both of the, these two terms can give rise to the low energy, the two low energy excitations. And now I want to use this simple picture to explain what is observed experimentally. So experimentally, we fo let's focus on one of the magnetic excitations, which is staggered along the y-axis. And uh, uh, because this uh, electric field uh, is anisotropy, uh, is uh, because the electric field is in um, is in the E representation, if you plot how the amplitude of the excitation depends on the field polarization, you find that it depends uh, as sine two phi, uh, which is uh, exactly match the experiments. And also because it's a second order process, it depends on uh, E squared. So uh, the amplitude have this uh, like e, uh, linear in E squared dependence. And furthermore, if you look at how this amplitude depends on the photon energy, uh, we can extract that from this uh, uh, coefficient that depend on the photon energy due to the second order process, and this is the result we obtained, uh, which also works uh, quite well. So at the moment, we saw that, okay, we have understood almost everything here uh, except for these small uh, deviations, and this deviation, uh, namely that Uh, there are some uh, like zeros uh, in the magnetization as a function of the laser uh, frequency, but we don't. Uh, we, there is no way for us to uh, lift these zeros. <coughs> 
However, this small deviation could also be understood if we realize that near the resonance, the other time scales becomes important. One time scale is a pump duration, and another time scale is a dissipation. And to study the time scale of the pump duration, uh, we can defect, uh, we can, uh, instead of studying the effective Hamiltonian, uh, we can, uh, study the, uh, unitary, uh, we can study the un uh, unitary evolution of the system, uh, following the quantum mechanics, and then project it uh, to the ground state manifold. And this is a result we find, uh, as a function of the pump duration. And in particular, uh, in the resonant limit, we find that uh, this unitary evolution, when projected to the ground state manifold, becomes non-unitary. And uh, because of that, uh, we need to combine, uh, we, we need to modify this effective Hamiltonian picture, uh, and uh, we find that uh, due to this non-hermation, uh, uh, like non-unitary dynamics, uh, it can lift uh, these zeros, and uh, we have a better match to the experiment. Uh, well, however, uh, this is not the full story, and uh, after uh, we had uh, published uh, this paper, uh, uh, Professor Nogetic's group came to us and showed us some of their uh, 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 data that uh, doesn't match with our theory at all. So what they do is that they pump the, uh, they pump the system uh, like with a variation of energies and study the terahertz emission. And they find, uh, and in particular, they can, they focus on, uh, the, uh, another mode, uh, which correspond to the staggered magnetization along the z-axis. Mm. And they find the nice oscillations, as I showed earlier, uh, for these higher energy magnets at a different pump laser frequency. And however, they find something, uh, that looks very weird to us. So in this off-resonant regime, they find a nice dependence of the amplitude uh, as a function of the polarization, uh, which goes as cosine 2 phi, uh, which can be explained through the second order um, perturbation. Um, however, in the resonant regime, they find a very, uh, they find nearly no dependence of the pump amplitude as a function of polarization. And also, they find that this pump amplitude uh, de uh, almost doesn't depend on the uh, photon, uh, uh, the, the, the electric field, uh, so this is a constant here. And that means that the, effect, the second order effective Hamiltonian uh, breaks down near the resonance, and uh, <coughs> the question is, uh, how can we uh, understand uh, this pumping near resonance, and is there a way for us to recover this effective uh, Hamiltonian picture uh, in this uh, in the new framework we want to develop that can capture all photon energies? And uh, to do that, uh, we realize that um, it is important for us to consider dissipation in the system when it is pumped near resonance. And the first thought we have is to include the dissipation from the uh, excited state, the doublet, to the ground state. And uh, uh, to model that, we use a limb blooding approach, uh, which is a very complete approach that can have a lot of nice properties, such as trace preserving, positive definite, and it makes sure the um, density matrix is formation. And in terms of the dissipation, uh, it is, uh, there is uh, also, uh, like, well, one can also find the, <coughs> uh, the limb blocking or quantum jump operator that describes the dissipation uh, from the symmetry. And including that, uh, we find that uh, as a function of the time, the staggered magnetization oscillates very fast, but if you look at uh, the long time limit, uh, uh, so all, all the staggered magnetization vanishes. And the reason is uh, because uh, can be understood if we go back to this effective Hamiltonian, you will realize that uh, it is a, a quadrupolar uh, operator as a result of the steady state that doesn't allow any dipole order.
And to include the dipole order, we need to uh, create some like single magnon excitations in the relaxation. And uh, uh, so Urban came up with the idea uh, to have this relaxation uh, of single uh, in the ground state manifold. <coughs> uh, and uh, so this single magnon flips, and with that, uh, Additional relaxation, we find that the steady state is both quadrupolar and dipole ordered. And here I show the staggered magnetization along the x and the z axis as a function of time. And if the pump field can end, like when, when the system already established the steady state, you would expect to see the net magnetization. <coughs> And uh, using this picture, uh, well, here I show the result when uh, we are in the steady state limit, namely that the pump field uh, duration is uh, large enough. Uh, and here I show two results, uh, both in the resonance and uh, of the resonance. I'm about to finish. So in for the uh, in the in the resonant limit, uh, you can see like how this staggered magnetization uh, uh, is independent, almost independent of the uh, polarization, and also it doesn't depend on the uh, pump fluence or the electric field squared uh, linearly. And in the off resonant limit, you will see a, a much a wide, uh, like stronger dependence of the. Um, staggered pump the staggered magnetization uh, with the polarization and also a uh, more linear dependence uh, with the electric field uh, squared. So this uh, to some extent uh, reco uh, recovers uh, uh, the experiments and there I should say that there are some cuneum parameters uh, here and we are still uh, trying to understand them uh, microscopically but uh, so far for the results I showed you these are not uh, like fine tuning it's uh, quite natural for us to use these uh, parameters. So to, to summarize uh, I have showed you the microscopic mechanism for non-thermal pumping or magnetic excitations and I first start with the effective Hamiltonian picture uh, that, in, uh, that shows the idea of the orbital pumping with spin orbit coupling and crystal field splitting taken into account. And then I showed you a uniform uh, fide framework, uh, so the Lindblad equations. And uh, uh, so I think this is a very uh, simple but uh, nice picture for us to understand the interplay between different energy skills. Uh, so for the future, uh, we want to include uh, the spin wave uh, effects of spin wave distortions and interactions in the low energy manifold more systematically. And also, uh, uh, th this will help us to understand the better the transition between the quadrupolar and the dipolar steady state. And also, it uh, would give us a, a better estimate of the uh, relaxation rate within the ground state manifold. And also, uh, it would be helpful for us to study the dynamics during the pro period. And in general, I think uh, the uh, idea of uh, studying the low energy dynamics, so the pumping with high energies and establishing the framework, uh, including all the energy skills, will be exciting to, exp uh, to explore further in this direction. So with that, I thank you for the attention. Thank you very much for a very interesting questions. Thank you, Menching, for this very nice talk. So what I understand is that um, whenever you are at resonance, dissipation effects are going to wash out um, quite a lot of features. So this is, should be, in fact, rather general in these experiments. Is this uh, a good conclusion that I can take from, from what you have shown us? That, of course, a dissipation at resonance, because then the, the energy scales uh, are going to matter, these dissipation energy scales, we will always expect in these experiments that dissipation wash out um, features at resonance. Can I say yeah, that yeah, this is a yeah, good conclusion in general, so not only in this material, but uh, in this type of experiments? 
Yeah, I think you, you can you can see uh, in this way. Uh, on the other hand, I, I think, uh, so you, you need to ask uh, what type of dissipations uh, you, you look at. So in fact, if we, for this case, if we include dissipations, but we don't, for the dissipation, it still remains a high symmetry. Say we still remain the C3 rotational symmetry uh, of the system, we still see this uh, on, on polarization dependence. Uh, so in the dissipation part, uh, we in introduce the anisotropies because of the stacking of the system, and that plays an important role. So the message I, I think we, we learned is that uh, so in, in the resonance, some other effects, uh, like this is some details of the dissipation that is not important, that important of resonance becomes important here. Okay, thank yeah. you. So thank you for the talk. I have like two questions. Uh, one is uh, in this Lindblad uh, approach, uh, these jump operators are usually phenomenological parameters that you put in. So I didn't get how many jump operators is one or two. Is this one number you use or two or three? Oh yeah. So for this uh, for this one uh, from the uh, EWT to the ground state manifold. Uh, we use the three. Uh, these are all. We, we basically we work out all the symmetry allowed jump operators, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so um, and I ask uh, uh, e what's the role of each of them. Mm -hmm. Can I have another one? Just a very naive one. So your effective Hamiltonian is I understood it's bilinear in the in the E fields. Uh -huh. So would this also allow for resonant infrared Raman? Uh, intensities to be calculated? Uh, resonant infrared Raman. So you have a uh, two photon in, two photon out. Uh, I mean, I'm not talking about non equilibrium now. I'm just talking about uh, calculating a Raman intensity with this operator. Uh -huh. Is it? Is it a. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm not an expert on Raman. Uh, so I, I, my understanding in the past is in the Raman we, we assume that it's a long, it's a long laser, and we can do everything using the effective Hamiltonian. Can you use this Hamiltonian also for this kind of? I mean, it's just okay. uh, for the effective Hamiltonian yeah. I, I developed. Uh, oh, I, I think I think so. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks for a very interesting talk, but uh, I'm new to the subject, so I have some elementary questions. So first, uh, you had the splitting of levels, and uh, the excitation energy was like a one milli electron uh -huh. volt. Right. Uh, then you pump the system by correspond the photons with corresponding energy, right? Uh, around mm. one EV, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then uh, this uh, one milli electron volt, excited state is uh, further split into several levels. Right. And uh, the splitting between these levels uh, basically corresponds to the anisotropy energy of your effective Hamiltonian or? Oh. Yeah, this uh, separation between these levels. Uh, uh, yeah, first, uh, uh -huh. what, what is the magnitude of this splitting? Yeah, the, the splitting is determined by the uh, spin orbit <laughs> coupling. Yeah. And uh, that uh, that actually that, that doesn't enter into the numerator of mm -hmm. the effective Hamiltonian because that only depends on this e squared and the matrix element. Uh -huh. And this splitting oh, okay. plays a role in the denominator. Ah, I and see. Uh, that is why. Okay. Uh, ah, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. That that is why you see you see this funny shape uh, because I see. of the I see. different levels. Uh -huh. Uh, then uh, after pumping, you observe some oscillation, and this uh, period of oscillation corresponds to which uh, time scale or energy scale? So. Oh, oh, you you mean this uh, this like general oscillation of the harmonic oscillator? Yeah. Uh, this this correspond to the energy of the magnons. Yeah, which is uh, not. Uh, uh, which is uh, about one million electron volts. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, in terms of uh, 
Yeah, in, in terms of uh, uh, time, it's a people second mm -hmm. skill. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for a very nice talk. So one quick question about the second part. You mentioned that, you know, you have coexistence of dipolar and quadrupolar ordering. Uh -huh. So what type of quadrupolar ordering is? Uh, di di what type of? Uh, what, what type of, you know, is it breaking different symmetries that compared to the dipolar ordering? So. Uh, you mean for the quadrupolar yes. ordering? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't, uh, haven't looked at, like uh, in detail into that. So then, how do you know that there is quadrupolar ordering? Oh, we, we can measure we can measure that we we can we can also I didn't show it here. Uh, we we can like just plot the uh, quadrupolar operator as a function of time and find it's non-zero. I see. Okay. Yeah, but I, I yeah that's a good question. We just uh, like haven't looked in detail about okay. it. Yeah. Thank you. We maybe have a related question to this. So basically. Uh, None of the details of the Hamiltonian enters here so far. Yes, so, I mean, you have a one magnet and you just look what would be output, but kind of the small difference in the Hamiltonian are not included, yes? Uh, in, the, in the, like, equilibrium in the, Hamiltonian. In the equilibrium uh, Hamiltonian. It's not important. So it motivates us to, uh, to design this dissipation term within the ground state manifold, uh, but um, this, this, this term plays a dominant role to tell us what the steady state is. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yeah, really nice talk. Uh, but uh, I didn't quite understand, like, the second part, the Lindblad part. So you have this effective spin Hamiltonian that comes through spin orbit coupling, your exciting uh -huh. orbital states, and then there's a spin orbit mixing, and then there's a two photon. Uh -huh effective spin, spin uh, dynamics in the, in, in the ground state, uh -huh. I guess. Uh, but then what processes are you adding? Like, I don't have a good picture. What process are you adding to rep, that are represented by Limblad? Is it a photon that just escapes the system, or what? Oh, uh, uh, so for that part, uh, we didn't think, think of them uh, as photons. So for this dissipation from the uh, excited manifold to the ground state manifold, we, we just uh, include uh, this uh, process. Mm -hmm. it, this M is uh, excited, uh, the state in the excited uh, I see. Manifold. So it just radiates away and it's not closed anymore. It's not... Right, right, right. It, it, you, you can think of them as because of the full, the full now or, or just the radiations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? If there are no more questions, let's thank Ms. Shining once again. Thank you.